Wayne Spoonie here on what has been a very fascinating day by our Boston Celtics. I just wanted to get a quick video up, get you a quick reaction as to where I'm coming from on our two new Boston Celtics. The big acquisition, Malcolm Brogdon, acquired via trade, Aaron Neesmith. Goodbye, Aaron. I will miss you. A first round pick, Daniel Tice, and some salary for Malcolm Brogdon of the Indiana Pacers. And on the mid-level exception, signed two-year deal for six point million for Danilo Gallinari. <laughs> Which is going to be fun to say, but I'm a little lower on that acquisition than I am the Brogdon deal. So let's let's just jump in, talk about Gallo real quick. He's pretty efficient offensive player, 58% true shooting, 52.8 effective field goal percentage. He gets to the line just a little bit. He's steady with the ball, 2.66 assist to turnover ratio. Cannot rebound for his size. Six foot ten, Italian fella, uh, 9.2 rebound percentage, which is like guard level. That's like Kemba up practically. But the good number, the big number, the great number. 42% on catch and shoot threes, uh, which I think is really where Brad Stevens is coming from with the thinking on this Gallinari acquisition. We saw in the finals, we saw in the playoffs, we saw all season Tatum and Brown are going to create wide open jump shots for the guys playing around them. And there's few better at converting those shots into points than Danilo Gallinari. <laughs> oh, sorry, I won't do that again. I'm lying. I probably will. Uh, Gallinari is an incredibly efficient wide open jump shooter, uh, so he should fit right in on the offensive end. I'm a little lower on this acquisition than I think a lot of Celtics fans, but nonetheless, uh, he will eat up a bunch of innings in the regular season, will allow the Jays to rest up a little bit during the regular season, unlike last year where they had these huge minutes loads and we saw it bite them in the ass in the NBA Finals. Gallo doesn't drive anymore, 2.5 drives a game, which is like nothing. Uh, a lot of bench players and low end guys who don't play much that average that many drives. Uh, defensively, I don't think he's a great fit, but you know, maybe we can kind of, I'd be interested to see if we try to have him guard centers and just kind of use his, his size and let Rob kind of roam. Uh, we'll probably play drop coverage if he's out there, but that's okay. We did that in the finals and we did that in the playoffs to some success. So I don't think in the, I think this is overall a positive addition for the regular season. I do not expect Gallo to make a big dent in the postseason rotation, but that's okay. It's the MLE. That's probably good enough on the MLE. I don't think it's a home run from grading it out of 10. I'd probably say this is seven out of 10. I like Gallo. Okay. The big deal, the crazy deal. Goodbye, Aaron. Goodbye. I can now, I might be, you might find me in the Indiana Pacers subreddit or on Pacers Twitter defending my boy. But nonetheless, Malcolm Brogdon, Emidoka's shiny new toy. Brogdon's got good size, 6'4, 6'5. He can play both guard positions. Um, he's more of kind of a combo guard ish, around six assists a game. He's not like a pure point guard, but he can make the right reads, can make the right passes. The thing that I absolutely love about Malcolm Brogdon is he is regularly in the top five in drives per game. This past season, although short for him, he only played about 30 games, 35 games because of injuries. 18 drives a game, good for fourth in the NBA. I mean, he's up there with like the John Morant, Steer and Foxes, like that's the type of driver he is. He just goes to the rim all the time. I think it's something the Celtics have desperately needed. So I think he will fit in very nicely on the offensive end, especially when you couple with that, with the fact that he shot 33% on catch and shoot threes this year, not great. Last year, 44.4% though. And the year before that, 36%. So I think what you're looking at is a guy who's probably a high 30s, mid to high 30s on good volume, catch and, three, catch and shoot three point shooter, who can also handle the ball, who can also play make for others, who's a decent finisher inside. Yeah, 
yeah, that's going to fit very, very nicely on that Boston Celtics offense. And defensively, he's a dog, man. He's a great defender. He fits right in in the Celtics defensive culture. He's very switchable. He's strong for his size. He's going to be he's going to be great for the Celtics if but if but if he can stay healthy. And that's the problem with Malcolm Brogdon. That's why he costs the same amount as Kevin Herter. If he didn't have injury issues, we wouldn't have gotten him for Aaron Neesmith and a first round pick and salary dump with Tice. We would have had to pay more. You know, he averaged basically 26 and five last year on, on a fairly efficient shooting like this and plus defense. If he didn't have injury issues, he's either not available or he's fetching a much larger haul. So it's a risk, but I think it's a calculated risk. And I think it's a risk that really raises the ceiling for this Celtics team. And man, we could have used him in the finals. So, so far this offseason kind of fireworks from Brad. I was not really expecting that big of a trade and we still have the TPE. So yeah, I'm excited, man. I, I like, I really like the Brogdon pickup. I really like that calculated risk for Brad Stevens. And you know, Gallo, he's fine. He's a very decent mid-level exception signing and we won't have to watch him light us up four times a year, three times a year when he's playing for Atlanta, which always is nice. Uh, so yeah, overall, good stuff, Brad. I'd give that Brogdon trade an eight, eight, eight and a half, um, just because you know the injuries are there and he may get hurt, but we don't need him. He's a luxury, and he's a luxury that can really raise the ceiling of this team. So good stuff, Brad Stevens. We will probably be getting a pod out sometime in the next day or two here, so please check us out, and thanks, as always, for listening, watching, supporting us.